<coughs> so this is just a quick overview of one of the models of the genetics and the way that these diseases are passed on to each other for Dupetrins and Lederhose disease. So for those that don't know, Dupetrins and Lederhose are connective tissue disorders where there's hyperproductive cells, or these are cells that grow fast, and they also overproduce collagen. And for Dupetrins this is in the hand, and for Lederhose this is in the foot. The overproduction of these cells and the collagen can cause the presence of tumours and in the feet in particular these are often painful whilst in the hand you get contracture of the fingers caused by cords that um, run up to the fingers. The exact genetic basis of these diseases isn't really known and there, there are several models as to, to how these diseases may occur. So here I show two parents, there's actually the mum and the dad and the mum in this case has the susceptibility mutation for dupetrins and the activating uh, mutation for dupetrins or later of course and this means she's very likely to develop these diseases of course in actual cells and people there, there's two copies of these genes but uh, these diseases are thought to be dominant so for sake of eatiness I've just shown one copy here so where there is an orange susceptibility mutation, they have an increased probability of getting these diseases. And where there is the green one, this sort of activates the disease and means it will occur. So the basic idea is that so the mum will develop it, so they have kids, and so in this case the son here may inherit the susceptibility gene, the daughter won't. And then the son however obviously won't develop the disease at this point as they haven't yet developed the activating mutation. So another factor about these diseases is that they often happen in uh, the later stages of life, so say 50 plus. So over time, obviously you increase the chances of you developing this activating mutation as I call it here. So say 50 years down the line this may happen and the son then may get this mutation and the daughter may also get this mutation, but as the son has this susceptibility, so to speak, mutation, they, they may then develop dupetrins and lederhose, whilst the daughter won't. Of course, there are many other factors in play here, such as environmental. So, in theory, you know, throughout a family, this could vary. So, this is an actual family tree um, from someone who is actually, in this case, the, the mother of a, a child who, who has lederhose, very young girl, unfortunately, but. Um, the, the sort of the traits that I was talking about here can be seen. So, if you look in the, all the children of parents one and two, there's a very high incidence of these conditions. And the statistics are actually, it's actually fairly even between male and female, which is kind of surprising because it, it's normally much higher in the, in males and females. But what you can see here is that there's, there's quite a widespread of these diseases, but if you say look at the first two sets of parents, or parents three and four, if you have a look down there, they actually don't have any offspring with this. This could be because the repeating mutation, the, sort of the susceptibility one wasn't passed down, but it could be none of the children develop the sort of activating mutation or the sort of trauma which, which could cause these diseases. So, but then if you then look, say, at parents there nine with uh, with their partner A, and you can see that actually all three of their ch uh, children got this disease. So it's hard to say exactly what's going on here. Could you know, they could all have the, uh, the susceptibility gene and have um, produced the sort of activating gene uh, mutation? Sorry, and of course you know, it, it could be that, that they passed down both of these, and so the kids had very very high chance of um, having these diseases. But you can see it, it does sometimes skip generations, so. If you go down F and G, it skips all the way down to child with the lowercase O there. So it could be here that all of these preceding family members didn't have the activating gene, but they were passing down the susceptibility gene. And it wasn't until it reached this person that suddenly they then got the activating gene, and then it kicked in. But of course, there is this huge sort of variation here and lots of unknowns. And this is just the model that, that I've just seen. So. 
the, the fact that there's high rates in men, it could be due to um, genetic factors, and if it is, it would suggest it's linked to the sex chromosomes, as that's sort of the easiest way of explaining the difference between males and females. Again, it can take you to else, like hormones affect the pathways that are involved with these diseases. <clears throat> or um, trauma has also been strongly linked to these conditions. And as you can imagine, like there has been certainly in the past a much higher level of manual labour jobs in men than in women. And so you'd expect this to increase the likelihood of trauma and therefore of these conditions. But it's not really known and it's something where there is ongoing research at the moment. The summary is that the, of what one model that I've seen is that there may be an inherited mutation that increases the likelihood of the conditions, but to actually develop the disease you either require a second mutation and perhaps and or trauma to, to then actually sort of trigger the onset of these diseases in the hand of the foot. There is some sort of <coughs> evidence of which pathways may be involved here. So it's it's been looked at from the point of view of damaged tissue and scar tissue because there's similar pathways in play and that obviously results in the production of new cells to, to cover up the loss that's occurred when you've been cut. And I've also looked at it from the point of view of one of the treatments which has been looked at in cells and it has been applied to some patients as well. So this is the TGF beta and IGF2 pathway and it sort of controls collagen production. I won't go into too much detail here because there are lots of details on, on my blog that, that explain this. But basically it's that if you get a uh, if you have a decrease if you have TGF beta one and you get a decrease in this results in decrease in IGF BP six, this results in decrease in IGF two, and this increases collagen production. So for one of the treatments here, I'll just quickly run over, say Zyaflex or Zyapex, as it's been called. Um, this results in a decrease in TGF beta. This means you have an increase in the IGF BP6, and an increase in this means that you have a decrease in IGF2, and this then results in a decrease in collagen production. Now, obviously, you see sort of the reverse in damaged tissue, and this is sort of maintained then in the disease tissue. And that does not say, there's not really a lot known about these conditions. And just to say that some of this information came from the Bupitrin disease as an related hyperdistrative disorders book that came out earlier in 2012. And also from personal experience and interaction from lots of different patients, uh, which is where I actually got that family tree from.